John Fedra with MobileHomeInvesting.net. I'm coming to you right now from beautiful and bright and sunny Miami Beach, Florida. Let's go ahead and actually get off of the beach and let's go ahead and take a look at two active mobile home investors deals and see what they're currently working on. John here driving through a mobile home park with Frank, the pilot. Hello. I'm being a co-pilot. This is a uh, highly Canadian population here. Okay. And you're saying that some of these homes will go for, they look average to me. $30,000, high 20s, but you're saying some of these are going for easily $100,000. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Lot rent here is about seven fifty a month. Seven, okay. Just average mobile homes. All double whites, though. That looks beautiful. Ooh, what's this? That's Have you those talked to these people? Yeah, that's oh. um, those guys do rehab for the park, so that's going to be a park-owned okay. home. This is one I almost bought... Um, but they wanted me to put a front door in this and add a front porch on it and like uh, $3,000 in landscaping and just wasn't worth it. Well, whoever bought it doesn't look like they did that. No, nah, I think it's still there. The, the same owners. This is a park right next to the other one, but the price range drops off by $30,000 here. You know, top dollar in here is thirty, thirty-five thousand for double wide. Uh, lot rent still like seven forty. She, I talked to her the other day. She saw me driving by. She wants to sell that, so I'll check on that the later. Six, six twenty-one here. Uh, the one right behind. Oh, okay. For sale sign. Oh, gotcha. But she owes a lot of money because she bought it from the park and used their financing, so she'll never get out from under it. So this park has nice homes and old homes. There was another park a few miles away that shut down about a year or two ago and they moved those homes and tenants to this park and um, haven't been maintaining it very well and a lot of the old timers here are fed up and want to move out so that's why I get some deals in here. All right, pulling up now to a uh, past double closing uh, that Frank did. Um, where he used the buyer's money to go ahead and fund the deal uh, to purchase the home and then resell it to the buyer, well, from the uh, seller. So this is it right here. Nice looking double wide. Excellent. That is gorgeous. Great, great looking home. Just in the middle of an average mobile home park. Huge AC on it. Excellent. You mind sharing the numbers? Uh, no, no, no. It's a... Okay. Uh, I believe it's a, it was a 2003 three bedroom, two bath. Um, the owner owed 18, I think 18,900 on it, so I paid that off. Um, so I bought it for, to say I bought it for 19,000. Didn't do a bit of work at all to it. Put a cleaning crew in there for 100 bucks just to clean it up. Um, I sold it in about a week, all cash for 28.6 and uh, never met the buyer, never met the attorney that I had to do the deal, and I never met the <laughs> seller because there was a tenant that lived in it. Um, so all that was, uh, transaction took about you know, three weeks total. Uh, I think we profited about, uh, cleared about $8,400 on that one. Fantastic, with none of your own uh, $100 out of my rest. pocket for a deposit. That was it. Really quickly, I want to go into how cool this was. Frank only used $100 of his own money to let the buyer's money pay for the home, pay the seller, and then Frank got to get, uh, keep everything in between. In this case, almost $9,000. So let's talk about the steps to do a double closing also known as a double escrow or a simultaneous closing. Now we have a seller that wants to sell. They currently owe, or let's talk, it's a 3-2, 2003 beautiful double wide there is a loan on the home the seller is trying to been sell, sell for a while um, because of that payoff she isn't able to go down in price anymore she currently owes eighteen thousand nine hundred and step number one for you or for Frank in this case is to get a contract between the seller and Frank step number one for in this case nineteen thousand dollars and Frank gave a hundred dollars earnest money, that was the only money into the deal, to the seller, or rather to the closing attorney. You want a closing attorney in most of your double closings or title company. 
uh, or an escrow company because they're the unbiased third party. You're going to be asking the buyers and sellers to do some kind of weird things, kind of go out on some limbs. Now everything's going to do uh, is going to end just the way that you say it is, so everyone's going to be happy. But with this type of deal, you want an attorney involved because again, they're the professional, the trusted expert in the area, and they're unbiased. Um, so that uh, the seller or the buyer doesn't have to trust you, they can trust an attorney. So step number one, contract. Step number two now is for Frank to find uh, an end buyer that wants to pay more than what he has the home under contract for. So Frank's going to try to sell this one for 100000 or 50000 or 20000 Now here's the thing, he sold it with, or he got this contract within a week. And that's what you should strive for. Whether your area is super, super warm or hot or a buyer's market or a seller's market, make sure that you're expecting to make at least $10,000. Don't do a double closing hoping to make $1,000 or $2,000 because sometimes we have to take discounts and concessions and go down in price a little bit to make it juicy for the end buyer and to negotiate. And then if you're only trying to make $2,000, you might only make $500 and it's not worth it. So try to make 10000 and then you might have to back off that. You make 8000 or 9000 like Frank did in this case. Or try to make twenty. If you think you can make twenty, you know, you'll probably have to come down a little bit off that. So I hope that made sense. So within a week, you, should, you know that you're getting a good property under contract that you can easily and quickly sell for more. Step two, Frank got that contract for $28,600 with a proof of funds letter so he knows that he's not wasting his time. Now, these buyers do have cash on hand and they're ready to close. Now, because the title has a lien on it, that title is being held electronically by the lien holder. And because title, uh, excuse me, because Florida, along with a number of other states, is what's known as an electronic lien and title state, it's a little bit difficult to pay off the title or pay off the lien on the title, let's say Monday, and then get the title in your hand and then resell it on Monday as well. Because it's typically a paper title uh, that's going to be mailed after the lien is uh, released, or sometimes it can be printed, but the lien has to be released, which typically takes, again, like a day or two days, uh, something to, to that effect. So again, another reason why you want the attorney. So step two, we, I think we understand that, contract between Frank and the end buyer. Now they're going to go ahead and place this 28.6 with the attorney, okay? Now the attorney is then gonna go ahead and pay off the $18,900, so that's gonna be paid off. Once the lien's paid off, the title will go to the attorney. The seller will sign the title. Now the attorney is gonna be holding the title or titles, one if it's a single wide, two if it's a double wide, three if it's a triple wide. Uh, so holding the titles and the remaining balance of this money, which in this case is the $8,000, $600 that's due Frank. So as soon as the attorney gets the title, they can go ahead and put the ownership to Frank. Now Frank is the owner. Now the end buyer, well, has already given the money to the attorney, so the attorney will then give the money to Frank, which he did, and then Frank will go ahead and title it over to the end buyer. Everyone's happy. So I hope that that made sense. I wanted to kind of show you how this was done and show you that there you know, wasn't really magic to be done. It was helping everyone involved and sort of getting creative, but getting things done um, in a very professional and helpful and easy manner. And long story short, this is just one deal in a random park with a seller and a buyer. Hey, Duck. All right, standing out front of a gorgeous looking, well, needs a pressure washing, gorgeous looking double wide right here, recently purchased by Frank. I love the tree coming out of the gutter. This is gorgeous. This is just your average run-of-the-mill double-wide mobile home. You got some nice newer ones out there with some pop-outs and some texture to them, some old single-wides. Um, but this is really good. Let's go ahead and... Uh, now this one does need some, some rehab inside. I like the front yard. I left the smell for you. So you get some Ooh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's the level. <laughs> I wish you could smell this. <laughs> Not as bad as I was thinking. 20 plus dogs and other animals lived here. The girl did a rescue mission, but uh, oh, yeah. I forgot to give them away. So, this is where all the pee stains were from the dogs. 
Oh, this is what you were talking about. Okay, and this is what we're looking at on the floor. Zinzer. Zinzer, primer, ultimate stain block. And odor blocker. Oh, and I can tell you this. You can still smell it, but just, I treated all the stain, all the uh, wet areas with uh, a thing called odor exit. And then I treated them all with bleach to kill anything that was left over. And then put down a coat of primer. And then put the coat of primer on. Which is a shellac that locks, seals everything in. So this is a four bedroom, two bath. Oh, it's a four bedroom, yep. okay. Yep, there's a, a nice big bedroom here. Big closet. Was this, could this be a den? Yeah, you three two with the den. den. Four bedroom. The cell for more. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is what the stains look like before. Now this is you're just going to be removing and replacing yeah, all this. Yeah. Water damage. Um, this whole cabinet's coming out. Replacing all the floor. The new vanity in. New toilet. Uh, we're going to put a nice uh, paint finish on the uh, tub so I don't have to pull it out. Shower surround. Now, it's important to note, this home, the exit strategy should be a uh, cash strategy. Cash deal. cash deal or financing with at least 20000 down. But it uh, should should sell for about $35,000, dollars 36 35 at the lowest. Okay. And in some, some areas around the country, you definitely have that opportunity to sell uh, forecast to double your money to triple your invested money. Uh, most areas of the country were selling for payments about 75% of the times, but about 15% you can sell for cash depending on your area. Um, and then other times we're renting or uh, selling with bank financing. So they washed all the walls. There's still a little smell which will come out when we uh, proper the walls. So right here where the homes were joined back together, this is the seam of the home. You think this is splitting at all, or no? This is probably I just. Think so. I think they just. Uh, there's a big gap. Okay. There's no. There's no leaks anywhere, right? No, not a single leak anywhere from the roof. Two thousand and one Fleetwood. Bought it for ninety-seven hundred dollars. <laughs> Purchased for ninety-seven hundred. Thirty thousand. I bought it for ninety-seven hundred. I love that each of these homes. They're so different in their in their layout. Now this is where your kids were helping you already. Yes. Pull some stuff out, and I love that. It's a family business. Ten bucks an hour. <laughs> really? yeah. 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 All right. Got to learn the value of money. Right um, soft spot. I just covered it up. Okay. Keep the critters from wandering in. Sure. Yeah. Pretty standard, right? Right behind the toilet. That's incredible. Look at all that. Yes. Yeah, I pulled up all the hardwood and saved what I could. Some of it had some. Uh, water damage, so that's in another pile we can use to okay. cut, make cuts from um, when they redo the floors. Gorgeous kitchen. How much do you think in just the material? Because that they, they left all that. Oh, there's about the 1200 bucks in material. Laundry room. Another soft spot by the door that we need to fix. threshold and rehang the door, but should not be a problem. Nice, huge, stackable AC unit. It's huge. Two years old. I mean, everything about this home looks great. Have you have you met the uh, neighbors? Uh, on one side. Oh, wow, look at that backyard. Oh, look at this backyard. Oh, these are out here. You're kidding. So we have to do some skirting. Obviously, pressure washing that will be done tomorrow. Uh, shingle roofs, all in good condition. A little tattered edge over there, but uh, no leaks, so we're not going to touch the roof. So I really hope that the first half of this video was helpful and it made sense to you. Now, Frank is in an area where you can sell mobile homes for cash, sort of in a... Um, you have a better chance of selling a mobile home for cash in his area, South Florida, than in other areas of the country. Now, take a look at the map on the screen. You'll see all those red areas, and there, there's many more around the country. But you'll notice that a lot of them are on the you know, coastal areas. And that's where people are going to typically have more money. People will be moving there and typically have more cash. They'll have capital available. So the ability for you to sell a mobile home and double your, triple your money and finding an end buyer with cash is more realistic. 
not a lot more realistic, but is more realistic in certain areas around the country versus other areas around the country. But if you are in a hot spot area, then you know, know that you can maybe have a better chance of selling a home for cash. Now with that said, let's go on to another investor right now for the next half of this video who's going to be selling a mobile home with monthly payments. Now please stick around to the end of uh, the section with Ryan because I want to talk about a marketing lesson that's so important and is definitely going to help you moving forward. So let's go off to Ryan right now and see what he's working on. All right, here we are in beautiful South Florida. I'm sitting here in the car with the pilot, Ryan. All right, we're going to take a look at, uh, I love this street. This is a private street with all mobiles on it. There's, are there any single family homes in here? Um, a little bit, like here and there are scattered. Okay, so, very these, few. so each one of these mobile homes is on a piece of land that's, this is not a park. This is its own private land. Each, each uh, mailbox has its own address on it. And, ooh, is this, here we are. Home sweet home. <laughs> These right here, these awnings come up. These are for uh, in the these yeah. have hurricanes, hurricane shutters for you people around the country that don't have hurricanes. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, so skirting. Oh cool, lizard. Wow. Have you had any uh, experience? Has this been falling off? Or any experience it's been here? Since I bought it, basically. Okay. <laughs> No worries. Is there anywhere where you can get underneath the home? Yeah, so this is this is the only spot where there's the rock over here. It's not just going down. So okay. There's some missing. Nice. Okay. So let's take a look. Okay. So you're on a private street. You have this big open area here. This is nice. This big lanai. Privacy over here. So this is all stuff that you're not getting in a park. Fence. Yeah. Window AC units. Have you met the uh, neighbors yet? Oh, oh, cool, look at them. Is that a mobile home or is that a house? No, no, that's a single family. Okay, so that's, that's like the only one on the block, I think. I don't know if you can see that pool over there. That's pretty cool. Wow, what is this? A, it's a crazy, dungeon? Weird. <laughs> yeah, it's a dungeon. Cool. Ooh. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, this is fine just to leave as is. I mean, yeah. I thought about possibly the inside. Put a coat of spray paint. Yeah, would be about the only thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. I mean, just the fact that the, the potential, like that's yeah. what this has. Yeah. It has it's tons really of potential. It's really secure. So possible pressure washing. Okay. Going out just a little bit. So you caulked all around here. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Um, basically, where the where this frame and and here. Well, and on the inside and outside of this vinyl frame. Awesome, and that, that, that stopped the, the leak. Yeah. Excellent. When I bought the home, it was leaking like crazy. Okay. All right, so now I'm in here, and my first smell, it smells mildewy, right? That's the smell? Yeah. Okay. yeah. The floors, okay, so the floors are a bit uneven right here. Now tell us, tell us, so you've had this one, this is a really interesting lesson. <laughs> um, because this is a big, huge home, how many square feet? 1340 foot. Okay. Do you mind us talking about that? No. That's okay. Fine. And we will, uh, so 1344 square feet, it's a three bedroom. Three bedroom, two bath. Okay. Tons of potential in a, in, in a resi basically a residential area. So anyone moving in here, you know, you're on a nice street with other kind of owners. Um, you bought this from the, the park manager, sort of the park manager who actually owns the land. Uh, Ryan does not own the land, but the park manager does own the land. Um, what are the numbers that you've sold the home for? Uh, tentatively. Tentatively, nineteen nine. Okay. Um, so nineteen thousand nine hundred total, nine fifty a month for about four and a half years. Lot rent is four fifty, so five hundred payment on the home, four fifty lot rent. Four fifty on the home per month. No, no, five hundred for the home, four fifty lot rent. So oh, okay. 950. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Yeah. And, oh. and a lot ran in the area. There's about four or five parks in the area. They all charge 700, 750. Just for a flat, just, just for a lot. Okay. Yeah. Was there anything in writing that you got that would keep the lot ran at this? No, but she's been doing it 30 years. She keeps it real competitive. Cool. And let's take a look at some of these other bedrooms. So we've just been in half of the house. And so even with these, I'm, I'm walking through the floor and I'm feeling some spring action, a little bit of spongy. You can kind of see. 
the outside, which is kind of common, uh, right here where the washer and dryer will be. So we did redid the whole flooring here, this whole entire floor is here. Okay. And then it was just painted? Yeah, we painted it. Okay. Yeah. And then this water spot? Happened kind of later on. I realized that this was leaking a little bit. Just this a, was a small leak, and then I, I, I got someone to fix that. Okay. But in the meantime, you know, did that. So, you know, the, the kitchen and the bathrooms are kind of rough, but this is, but since I lowered the price, I'm getting a lot of response, so I think it's priced right now. Okay. To sell as is. Now, as of right now, um, you actually have somebody that people are already filling that application. Yeah, today. Yeah. This is a, a kind of a good, uh, a good lesson for, for this. You had a lot of, you, you can really kind of identify where in the marketing things are messing up. So you had an ad out, you had a lot of people calling you. Right. You even had a lot of people going to the home. Right. When they saw the home, they were either not calling you back. Mm -hmm. What did they say when they did call you back? Um, too, needs too much work or uh, most of them just disappeared. They would, they would say they were interested and then just disappear. So When this happens to you and people don't call you back, don't take it personally offended. It's good. You're getting the riffraff out of the way. A lot of people in your life, a lot of potential tenant buyers, and believe me, when you put an ad out offering payments to sell a property, uh, you're going to get a lot of people calling you uh, if the price is right, if the terms are right, of course, if the home is attractive. So we're going to talk about in this video right now, in this lesson, about where you, you can kind of diagnose what the problem is. Why isn't my mobile home selling? You can figure that out for yourself. Uh, and here is how you're going to do it. So behind me, you're going to see the prospective payment buyer's funnel. And we end with closing, because we're going to close with you know, one person or one family. And we're going to start with the tenant buyers, the prospective tenant buyers, seeing they see your ad. So they see your ad and realize that they have to do things. They have to call you. They have to go to the home. And every challenge, every hurdle that you put in front of people to call you on time, to show up on time, to be respectful to you. Listen to how they're you know, acting to you. Do they show up on time? Do they follow through with what they're going to say they do? All of these things tell a lot about your uh, tenant buyer, the person that you may be having a relationship with for the next five or ten years. Now, in this video uh, a little bit earlier, we talked that Ryan, it took him almost four months to sell this property. And that's way too long. That's three months longer than it should take. Now, we do want to shoot for one to two weeks of repair. Now, it took Ryan two months to get the home repaired, which, which uh, really I, I want to make sure the people watching, you know, you listening to my voice right now, don't drag your feet on repairs. You should have laser focus. It doesn't have to be you making those repairs. It should be a handyman that can dedicate their full time to say, you know, my home has this much of work done. I need it done. In one or two weeks, you can get a ton of stuff done to a mobile home. You can build an entire mobile home in a, in a week or in two weeks uh, in a shop. So to get it fixed, usually no question, uh, one or two weeks. And every day that you're holding the home, you have holding cost. You have lot rent that you have to pay for, electricity. And just the anxiety is of, you know, you're holding on to this home. You want to get out of it so you can go on to the next one. So one to two weeks to fix a home, one to two weeks to find your tenant buyer okay maybe not they're getting approved at the park at that time but one to two weeks again the home that you're selling should be attractive maybe not the, the physical appearance 100 percent maybe it needs a little bit of work there but the price and the term should actually be should should be really attractive and we as real estate investors mobile home investors yes we want to make our money back as quickly as possible but we know that we're going to make our money in the long run especially when selling with uh, payments so the first thing that uh, you're going to notice whenever you start selling a home and you're questioning, why isn't my home selling? The first thing, are people seeing your ad? Now, are they calling you? Okay, that's the first thing. Are they calling you from the ad? So who's calling you? And after you're talking to them, do they go and see the property? Is what you're saying, the words coming out of your mouth, the description of the home, the price of the home, how you're talking to them, maybe you're too abrasive or you know, too hard on them for some reason, and no one wants to work with you or wants to work with your home or wants to go see your home or the price is just too crazy. So they're going to call you to get more information, then they're going to go ahead and they're going to see the home. Typically, I have my people go by the outside, you know, drive by the outside, make sure it's right for you and your family. If you want to look through the windows and then call me, let me know, I'll give you the code for the door and you can walk through. And again, are they showing up on time? Do they call you? Are they respectful? 
Then they will go see the inside. After they see the inside, they typically renegotiate. Now they're more serious. I like the home. I like the inside. Now let's really talk money. You're asking this amount for a move-in fee for monthly payments for this long. How about we renegotiate a little bit? A lot of tenant buyers will want to do that. So renegotiate goes right here. The next step is to be park approved. Uh, park. Park approved. There you go. So <laughs> they're uh, park approved. That's terrible. Okay, yeah. So they go, they're park approved now, and then again, do they show up on time? When can I expect you to go get approved with the park? When can I expect uh, that application to be, to be turned in? And they should do it when they say they're going to do it. Keep in mind, every step, there's people that are just being kicked out of this funnel. They're not interested, they can't follow up, they don't have the ability to pay, they, they do have evictions or a criminal history, and we won't accept that, the park won't accept that. After they get approved by the park, one of the last steps is to get approved by you. By you or your third party company or your mortgage loan originator, uh, they're going to go ahead and prove the, you know, the, the final step of this equation and then they have to show up for the closing. You show up, you sign, they hand over uh, the money that they're supposed to and then the final step is that now they are the homeowners and they're paying you uh, monthly now for the next you know, five, ten years move, moving forward. So if you have a jam anywhere and you notice that a lot of people are going inside but no one's renegotiating with you, well obviously the inside doesn't look good. Now people should be telling you, hey you're asking too much or this home is super ugly, but if no one tells you, you can diagnose it depending on you have a lot of calls but no one's going to see the outside. Well, you, have, you don't have it priced right. No one's getting past that stage. Or no one that sees the ad is even calling you. So you can really understand, maybe even here, everyone loves the home. Everyone, you know, they want it. But when they try to get approved at the park, no one's getting approved at the park. So you can really understand, again, where in the line of this whole selling funnel, you know, you're, you're experiencing this uh, trouble. Now let's go back and wrap up the video. All right, so what did you think? I hope that that was very valuable for you to see uh, two basically fairly new mobile home investors closing properties pretty inexpensively compared to the area. I mean, homes down here sell for over six figures a lot of times, but to get into homes for just a few thousand dollars to help sellers, to help buyers, to make a good bit of profit in the middle, uh, that's kind of what we're doing, helping the community, helping ourselves, helping our futures, uh, etc. If you have any comments or questions, please like and share this video. Comment below. Email me personally. Uh, support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Getting into the home. I like those rounds. That's kind of weird. It's like rounded <laughs> down here. That was actually my handy And then. Very <laughs> strong. Nice. <laughs> oh, and that's outside. Right there. Thank you. That is not a good way. That's the end of John Petra <laughs> touring a mobile. The mobiles got the best of me in the end. They got the final lap. <laughs> I had it priced for twelve hundred a month down to nine fifty a month. Okay. So I'm dropping it quite a bit, but my spread was was gigantic at the beginning, right. and now it's just it's big. Okay. <laughs> it's still going to be a great profit.